I love to sing. I love performing. I love the spotlight. I love to show off. I love to be loved. I love to be looked at. I love to be embraced. But I'm trying to stay away from show business. And after the curtains, I'm going home. When I was young, I never needed anyone. I don't write my songs, so I'm at the mercy of songs. Making love is just a book. I mean, 20 years later, I'm still singing the same songs. We always worked 50-50 as partners. I mean, to lose your husband is hard. To have young kids and a teenager lose their dad, that was not easy. And it's still not easy. I thought I was going to be there for a moment, and the moment lasted 16 years. Some people say, you know, to live with your managers. For some people, it's tough. I don't doubt it, but I'm not in their shoes. They were not in ours. My role as a person is to not disappoint. My role as a singer is to please my crowd. She's recorded over 500 songs, released 26 albums, and played to more than 15 million concert goers in more than 2,000 shows. She is Celine Dion. Hello, I'm Steve Wright, and for the next two hours or so, we'll be hearing from Celine in an exclusive new interview recorded in Montreal. And from A, her recording of Eric Carmen's All By Myself, to B and a song from a 1991 American animated musical that not only changed the good fortunes of Walt Disney Studios, but also Celine Dion. I always kind of feel that Disney did so much for me. As a child, I didn't have the chance to discover animation or Disney movies because I started such an early age between the school and learning English and going to vocal coaches and preparing my career. I didn't have time to watch TV or go to the movies. First of all, we didn't have, we couldn't afford it. But Disney did a lot for me in Beauty and the Beast. It helped me to discover what Disney was all about. has played a big, big role in my career. I kind of felt that I was part of the family, of Disney family, because once you work with them, they welcome you so well, they respect you so much, and they're so professional, and if they want you, they really, really want you.
The Oscar-winning song that's widely regarded as being Celine Dion's breakthrough into pop music stardom and the one that cemented her international success. Another B now, and we're staying at the movies. In 1996, Robert Redford and Michelle Pfeiffer teamed up to star in Up Close and Personal. And who better to sing Because You Loved Me, the film's love theme, than Celine? As you probably know, and if you don't, you will know now, most of my songs, it's about love. I've sung so many ballads and love songs. And the song Because You Loved Me, how many people did I meet before or after shows telling me that this song and this song or this song or this one or that one had helped them to recover from something hard or losing a friend, a parent, a loved one. And I'm very proud of it, more today than ever before, because all my love songs were for Renee, my husband. I realized the impact that singing those songs through all the years, and I have to be honest with you, there's been many moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, not again. And then the curtain opens, and you look at the crowd, you look at these people, and that's the song that she or he wanted to hear. They got married with it. They went through some tough times. They listened to that song. And you look at someone and you start to sing and then you see a big smile or tears or anticipation all in the above. And then you forget that you have been singing this song 20 gazillion times. The songs, they, they grow, they transform, they bloom. And I have realized through time that many of my ballads like because you loved me for all those times they're not getting old it feels that they have a life forever for all those times you stood by me for all the truth that you made me see for all the joy you brought to my life for all the wrong that you made right for every dream you made the truth
Because you loved me, and from B we arrive at C. And for Celine Dion, that must stand for concerts and performing live. C for concerts. When I when we go on tour, the dynamic of going on tour, it's very living on the edge. When you travel, it's very exciting because it's rock and roll. So I would call it a pair of jeans. It's rock and roll. It's also difficult because you can get sick, so you have to be very careful. But also not talking only negative, because there's negative and positive in, in everything in life. But also because we are discovering how people live, their cultures. You learn so much. And when you are in the same place, when you have residency, for example, that's a different energy. I would call it a gown. I would call it a hmm, kind of a pajama party as well. Because the good thing about it is that it's still life. And the plus about it is that you go home every night. You sleep in the same bed every night. Your kids are waiting for you every night. So there's not one better than another. It's just a different energy. And that's the magic of performing live, which is amazing to have a bond, to have a connection, to have something to give and to receive something back. So it feeds you, so we feed each other. It just happens. Shall we go for it? In 2003, Celine Dion began an ambitious new live concert residency that would not only revitalize but also revolutionize the famous Las Vegas Strip. I was invited to perform in Las Vegas. And I remember seeing Franco Dragon, who was, it was his vision, Franco Dragon, who was the director of putting this show together. And he came to Florida, actually. And I've met with him, and it was like, so big. And Renee, I remember, was extremely excited about that. We did commit it on paper that we were going to have a residency in Las Vegas and sing. They were going to build a coliseum. But then after that, I was not part of meetings. If he says that it's a good thing to do, it is a good thing to do. My husband, he was right. <laughs> and I also heard that Oh gosh, the Titanic is going to sink again. And then I heard that the people who go to Las Vegas is to, to finish their career. But if you listen to every comment, we are in an industry where we are criticized. If you are not willing to hear critics, good or bad, ah, well, you're not in the good business. You put yourself under the spotlight. You give the best that you can. You're not going to please everybody. And if you don't want to hear about it, 
You can always sit at the desk and answer phone all day long. You know, it's up to you. But it was um, kind of a theatrical, a new way for me. It was called a new day. And for me, it was like a new chapter of, of my life. And I was very happy because my role as a person is to not disappoint. My role as a singer is to please my crowd as much as I can. I didn't want people to lose money. I didn't want to let them down. I, I, I didn't care about the details. I thought I was going to be there for a moment and the moment lasted 16 years. I mean, where did it go? Celine Dion, in a new day, presented by Chrysler. After a year of sold out shows, Celine Dion's A New Day, created by Franco Dragon. Celine Dion, only in Las Vegas. And only at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace. Well, from Las Vegas to France and the letter D. 1995's Der, also known as the French album. It not only proved once and for all that Celine Dion was committed to maintaining two recording careers, it went on to become the best-selling French language album of all time. Well, D, with the album Der from Jean-Jacques Goldman, I was not really trying to um, convince myself that I could have a career with both languages. I mean, I've sang in many other languages, Mandarin and whatever, we're not going to start that, but for M, you can take a note and say M for Mandarin, you know. <laughs> but the collaboration with Jean-Jacques Goldman with the album Deux, it was an amazing experience working with him. Jean-Jacques Goldman was such a, a big name in France, and he's the type of writer that really doesn't just write a great song that's going to be a hit. He want that song to be meaningful and, I don't know, a song that would live forever, I guess. But for him to be interested to write a whole album at that time, for me, Renee and I were very, very, very excited. So he wrote songs and he presented those songs to us one by one. And the first song that he played we were like both crying because it was so personalized and I mean French obviously is the blood that flows into my my veins and it's my origins but it was it was an amazing success and that success it put the album to the top of the charts I, I can't even tell you for how long and how much we saw but it was like a record break I don't know how to say that but I mean, it was it was a big one, and "Pour que tu m'aimes encore" is um, is an anthem.
Celine recorded an English language version of that song called If That's What It Takes and was staying with the multilingual topics for the letter E. It was an event that put Celine Dion centre stage on the European map, the 33rd annual Eurovision Song Contest. I do have for Eurovision many, many memories. First of all, I sang that song representing Switzerland. I'm saying to myself, what are they going to think? They're going to think that, pff, why they're not choosing somebody from Switzerland? So I got to do a good job here. I felt a big responsibility, but it was a wonderful experience. Not only because Switzerland won, I was very, very happy for them. I was proud of myself. My husband was more proud than me, for sure. <laughs> me, I didn't think I was going to win, but I was caught by surprise and I could not control my nerves. And I was crying, crying, crying. And I had to re-sing it again, just crying. <laughs> so I sang it again. And then what I remember as well to finish with Ne Partez Pas Sans Moi in Dublin. It was my first kiss with René. UK entry by just one point. We forgive you, Celine. I'm Steve Wright. You're listening to Celine Dion from A to Z. So we arrive at the letter F now, and it's a recording milestone. The 1996 album that won two Grammy Awards and went on to sell over 33 million copies, falling into you. I never have any idea whether it's for falling into you, album, or any project. I never have any idea how the fans will react or receive another album because as artists I don't write my songs so I choose them uh, with the help of course of my team 
But I never expect anything because, first of all, I don't want to be disappointed. And second of all, show business is full of surprises. And, of course, I did not know what this thing, is it going to be selling a lot or not? I mean, compared to today, the industry, in, in everything pretty much, but the music industry changed tremendously when people started to not sell records anymore. I realized today that one album after the other, selling more than 30 or 33 or 32 or 35, I don't know the number, and it's not important to me, even though I'm not saying that I don't care. What I mean is that I'm, I'm very glad but I was as well very lucky, that's my point. That's amazing. I'm falling into you. title track of Falling Into You, which according to Billboard magazine solidified Celine Dion's reputation as one of the world's true pop divas. And there's one track on that album that really earned her that title. It's All Coming Back To Me Now was a never-ending song. <laughs> the visual was so strong. It was so like the dum 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 Jim Steinman was producing the song, wrote the song, produced the song. We were in New York. And I remember his console where he was like recording with, there was about 80 something tracks. He didn't make me sing the song like four times. No, I sang it so much. This song was more than a song, so dramatic. It was a movie. There were nights when the wind was so cold That my body froze in bed If I just listened to it right outside the window There were days when the sun was so cruel And all the tears turned to dust And I just knew my eyes were drying up Forever. And I was like, wow. But you were history with the slamming of the door. And I made myself so strong again somehow. And I never wasted any of my time on losing that. But if I touch you like this. And if you kiss me like that It was so long ago But it's all coming back to me If you touch me like this And if I kiss you like that It was gone with the wind But it's all coming back to me It's so all coming back, back It's all so coming, coming back, back to me now, now.
what a song. So it was very fun to work with Jim Steinem because it felt that he was never tired to hear me sing. He was proud of his song. I was very lucky that he thought of me, very privileged. So it's all coming back to me now, I guess. If you forgive me all this, if I forgive you all that, we forgive and forget, and it's all coming back to me. When you see me like this, and when I see you like that, we see just what we want to see all coming back to me. The flesh and the fantasies all coming back to me. I can barely recall, but it's all coming back to me. Uh. We're at the letter G now, as in goals. Touchdown. No, the other sort of goals, as in dreams and ambitions. Some people know very early in life, and some don't. It's not given to everyone to do what they love in life. So if you find that, you're extremely rare and very lucky. I have twins, boys, they're eight and a half. And I have my first child, now is 18 years old. And I keep telling him especially, that he doesn't have to know what he wants to do in life now. And I'd rather them to take their time, especially my oldest, of course, eldest, should I say, to take his time to know what he wants to do in life when he's got, when he tries this and try, he wants to try that. And I want him to try things because then he will find himself and he will be very happy in what he does. So that, that would be my wish for my children. But I never really had time or never pause or never took a moment to say, what do I want to be when I grow older? And um, there was the Olympics in Montreal. When I saw Nadia Comaneci, at one point I wanted to be a gymnast, I don't know how to say it. I hope I'm saying it right, a gymnast. That's what I want to be. Of course, I was on the kitchen table before singing for my siblings, my brothers and sisters. I was five years old. I was on stage. I sang at my brother's wedding. I was doing like, when I say concerts, private concerts for weddings, for, you know, just with my family. I mean, when you're 12 years old and you're on stage and they have to write everything that you need to say because you, you don't speak English. So you have no clue what you're singing. So I went to school to learn English to have an international career because at one point I want to have a career like Michael Jackson. Just a little simple thing. Wow, small dreams.
It was only a dream, as it's known in English, Celine's debut single, released back in 1981, when she was just 12 years old. The letter H now. In 2019, the Guardian newspaper described Celine Dion as the joyous new queen of fashion, while Style Bible Paris Vogue wrote that fashion was loving Celine, and for the singer, it became become an obsession. So, our H must be haute couture. Fashion, I don't know if it's an obsession for me, but it's definitely an art. And, of course, I've loved clothing all my life. We never had money, but we were never poor because we were so lucky to have amazing parents who were very smart for food, for staying safe, for staying warm, to be well raised with true values of life, foundation, good foundation, affection, attention, love, respect, to be good people. I have worn my brothers and sisters clothing a lot when I was a child. But I don't think it's the reason why I am obsessed with clothing today, the fact that I wore my brother's pants and my sister's socks. My mother was making these clothes most of the time, and she was amazing because everything that she did was with love. And then I started to make money, so the first thing I did is bought my parents a house. So we all lived together. Then I bought myself a house. And then I started to buy myself i think the first thing that i bought i think it was probably a chanel bag or a jacket from chanel from carl agrafel i had the privilege of meeting with him so i always loved fashion very very much and more than ever now those designers all those pieces of clothing that are arts you put them on and i change i talk differently i walk differently I present myself differently. Each piece of clothing for me has something to say. We've arrived at the letter I, and for Celine Dion, just who were her musical influences, inspirations, her idols? My influences in music, actually. How many days do you have for talking with me? Um, First, I have to say my brothers and sisters, because I am the youngest of 14 children. We're all singers and we all play instruments and we're all very into music, as well my parents. My mom used to play violin and my dad accordion. So listening to all of them and really be part of that music, a part of that language, um, they were doing the Doobie Brothers, the Credence, Janis Joplin, the Beatles, Stevie Wonder, Frank Sinatra, there's so many. So the music that they were enjoying kind of had a, a mirror effect on me because it's what I was hearing. But the first record I bought was Stevie Wonder. I remember... And I remember one of my brother had the eight tracks. I had the album. And he had braids. And I loved the big albums because I could see the artist big. And I and I just loved it. And I was not speaking English. And that's why like I don't know the the words so well even still today. But Stevie Wonder was like um, the first album and I went to see him in Montreal when he came. Actually, I saw him live. I was very far because I couldn't afford a, a VIP ticket. But, whoa, Stevie Wonder, everyone's feeling pretty. It's our third in July. Though the world's full of problems, they couldn't touch us even if they tried. I'm 
I'm loving this. We're off to Japan next for the letter J and a singing contest that saw a 14-year-old Celine win the grand prize in front of 115 million TV viewers at the 1982 Yamaha World Popular Song Festival. I didn't have any idea how big that contest in Japan in 82 was, period. And, and it's better this way because if you have an idea how big things will be or turned out, I'm not sure if you're going to make it. So the song contest in Japan was a big contest. A lot of people, a big symphonic orchestra, it was big. So in a way, it was a good thing that I did not know how big this thing was going to be and the impact that... um, and, And when you go, you go, you sing, and... I, I, I just want to sing the best that I can. I don't think of winning. What I want is to win people's heart. I don't do what I do to win. I don't want to be the best of everybody. I want to be the best of me. Because if you start thinking that you want to be the best of everybody, well, you start to be your own loser. I want to be the best of myself, and that's my my way of living. And the song that I did sing in in Japan was a French song by Eddie Marnay, and it was called Tellement j'ai d'amour pour toi. Tu m'as ouvert les yeux Tu as guidé mes jeux Dis-moi ce que tu veux Je t'aimerai toujours Tellement j'ai d'amour Mon premier souvenir, toi qui m'as vu grandir, mes bras sont bien trop courts, tellement j'ai d'amour pour toi. Ma vie est faite de désirs posés sur moi. Mon puits de sagesse, mon bâton de jeunesse, ma source de tendresse, tu es mon seul recours, tellement j'ai d'amour pour toi. Et pourtant, tu le sais, un jour je m'en In English, I have so much love for you. We're staying in Japan as we arrive at the letter K and the Japanese word karaoke. And here's a bit of advice for any wannabe Celines out there. First of all, I'm privileged if they consider my songs to sing. Try to make it your own version if you can. I mean, the best way that you can, because when you love an artist and you listen, you listen, you listen like me, I have a tendency to wanting to sing it like the artist that I love. It's, It's a natural thing, but I've met a lot of young people coming to me and say, my life is to sing. That's all I want to do. And it hurts me to hear that because when I was young, I didn't know that I was going to be a singer. I got into the singing business. I'm still in the singing business. So what I say to them is that you love to sing and I hope your dream will come true, but don't hold on only to that dream. Please have a few. And the most important thing, hold on to yourself. We'll take that advice. We've arrived now at the letter L, so let's talk about Love, the 1997 album. Well, let's talk about Love album, which I've done a few duets on that album. And if I may talk about the one that I did with Barbara Streisand. Never, never I would have thought dreamed or even think about singing with Barbara Streisand. I was working a lot with David Foster at the time, and he kept saying once in a while that he would love both of us to sing together. And I'm like, me? No problem. Anytime. Yesterday. Okay. But Barbara, I have so much. 
admiration for her. So it was like, wow. And when it did happen, I could not believe it. I'm scared, so afraid to show again. Will he think me weak if I tremble when I speak? Another L from another album with love in its title. 2013's Loved Me Back to Life. But which track would Celine like to hear again? Oh my gosh. The reason 
why I have chosen all these songs that were proposed to me. It's because I love them, because they moved me. I miss them. So since Loved Me Back to Life, I haven't sung it as much as I would want to sing it. Because when we put a show together, there's so many songs we have to keep behind because I have too many songs. And Sia is one of my favorite performer of all time right now. It's like, I would choose that song. Oh, wow. I love it so much. I was walking dead, still can sell my hair. I couldn't get out, turn the lights down. The voices inside were so loud. Need a drum star, cut a tourney hair. I couldn't breathe. I wish that I could disappear. The voices inside were so real. I feel like there's a bond beyond the songs. He's the only man I've ever kissed in my life, and it was the best. I got things to do. I'm a mother, and I got a lot of work to do. Courage. This is the first English album that I'm doing without my husband. This program was first broadcast in 2019. 
From A to Z with Steve Wright. Welcome back. And we continue our A to Z with another letter, M, for motherhood and the 2004 concept album, Miracle. A multimedia collection combining Celine's music with a pictorial book by Australian photographer Anne Geddes, celebrating the joy of babies. The Miracle album is definitely a concept album from A to Z with the photographer Anne Geddes. It was, it was fun. Uh, because it was kind of like crossing a bridge. It's not like a roller coaster, for example, with the rest of the albums, which is fun because I love roller coasters, ups and downs and turn. And this one is like crossing a bridge, which is wonderful. It's much more, it's like a soothing thing. And the miracle because I have given birth to my first child. So it made sense for me to talk about the miracle of life I mean, holding this miracle in my arms, looking at my child, looking at Renee's child, looking, looking at both of us. Look what we did. This is amazing. Nothing could just be in competition with that for me and for Anne Geddes, who is a very different, spectacular, unique photographer. She did photograph my first child. To see her at work, I did respect her even more. And for my part, I was amazed. You're my life's one miracle. Everything I've done that's good. And you break my heart with tenderness. And I confess it's true. I never knew a love like this till you When you smile at me I cry And to save your life I die With a romance that is pure heart You are Spot. Whatever it requires, I live for your desires. Forget my own, your needs will come before. Who could ever love you you and every breath I take 
could ever love you The title track of Miracle, produced by David Foster. The letter N now, and if you'll excuse a small amount of poetic licence, it's the 2002 album, A New Day Has Come. A new day has come A new day has come The album A New Day Has Come was for me a, a new chapter, if I may say. It was not necessarily a concept, but the fact that at this part of my life, I was about to engage in something new, the show in Las Vegas. And a little prior to that, I became a mother for the first time of my life. I was full of joy, of strength, of curiosity, of discovery, of anticipation. So between one hand with a baby and another one with a concept of a, a show, I had a new day has come. Okay, what's next? It's the letter O, the 2003 album One Heart, which saw some critics accuse Celine Dion of simply chasing commercial and chart success. One Heart album, first of all, I'm not, I was not chasing anything, but in a way, let me put it this way. Without wanting to chase and kind of like look for a sound that's what's being played on the radio and I need to fit in there and I have to be the top five and I have to be number one and I have to be... I mean, I don't write my songs. So I'm at the mercy of songs. So the writers who send me songs, they are influenced by what they hear on the radio. I'm not chasing nothing. I got things to do. I'm a mother and I got a lot of work to do. Uh-uh, no time for chasing. You can run and you can
So it came because of the music industry that was changing. So the writers, they're writing what they hear, they're influenced, they think they invented it. It's okay, as long as they commit to do the best that they can, they send it to the artist because they want to make hits, they want to make money, this is their pay thing, this is their check, of course. When they knock at my door and they send me songs, I'm very, very happy. I listen to it, if I like it, I'm just trying to respect his work. And which track from One Heart would Celine like to play? You want me to pick it? You, you want me to pick one song? That, that's so hard for me. You want me to pick one song? All right, so from the album One Heart, just because of wonderful and happy memories of a new day in Las Vegas, singing with 50 dancers going crazy in the center of the stage going... You feel like me coming out of the stage center on top. The visual paid a big part of that song. And singing it, everybody was like into it. So I would have to pick I Drove All Night. now and for us it stands for partnerships as in business as well as enjoying a hugely lucrative association with caesar's palace in vegas celine is now the face of l'oreal paris she's also launched a fashion range luggage accessories handbags and unisex clothes for children and with the american beauty company coty she's got no less than 17 fragrances on the market with an estimated global sales of over a billion dollars p4 Perfumes. I was very, very uh, involved in my perfumes, creating actually perfumes with Cody. But when you're in the process of making your own, it was like an amazing kind of adventure. A perfume is something very, very personal. You can smell it in a bottle, wearing it is something different, and it can smell great on you. It doesn't work on another person. And that's why there's so many perfumes. It's because there's so many different skins. People perspire differently. It was just wonderful. Wonderful to choose, to smell, to discover. Ooh, shakalaka. Introducing the new fragrance from Celine Dion. And P could also be like this one. The whispers in the morning. Of love and sleep and tight Are rolling by like thunder now As I look in your eyes I hold on to your body And feel it true This is warm and tender A love that I could not forsake Cause I 
Have a song that is extraordinary. Don't try to reinvent it. And if you want that song to be part of your repertoire, just respect it. And while I was working on the power of love, I was working with the producer David Foster. We did our work the best we can, and everybody seemed to be very happy with the version that I did. And it, I still sing it, and people are still using it for their for their weddings and for their lives. It's very uh, touching for me. I'm Steve Wright, you're listening to Celine Dion from A to Z. We've reached the letter Q, and for Celine Dion, that can only mean one thing. Quebec, in Canada, home. Charlemagne, province of Quebec, Canada, will always be the blood in my vein, the roots. I think, actually, it's mixed with maple syrup. That's why I'm sweet. <laughs> because it's home, definitely. I've traveled the world many, many times, and I've enjoyed it, but there's no place like home. And even though I do spend and live in Las Vegas because this is my residency, and even though the shows are done now, I don't want to pack my bags and like, okay, it's over, bye-bye, you know. Let's take one step at a time. But I was born in Charlemagne, in the province of Quebec, and there will always be something there. First, my family, my roots, my blood. And for me, it's one of the most beautiful country in the world. There's thousands of lakes, and I know sometimes people have it rough, the winters are tough and the summers are short, but in some countries, you have to look outside of your window sometimes and see that we might have it tough sometimes, but some people don't have it at all. Let's enjoy our country. It's a beautiful country.
fan favourite to love you more. Arnau, Celine Dion, met René Angelil in 1981. He became her manager and later her husband. Their wedding was even broadcast live on Canadian television. But in 2016, after 21 years of marriage, René passed away. What drove René? Love? People? Food? Show business? Talent? Gambling? Friendship? Children? I can probably go on. He, he loved life a lot, a lot. I was very, very lucky, very lucky, because he had given me strength, knowledge, understanding, uh, trust in myself, visions about the artist that I was trying to be, starting to be the wife that I was engaging myself to be, the mother, and he's the only man that I've, I've ever kissed in my life. He's my only boyfriend that I've had, and it was the best. So I feel like I have been fulfilled with so much of his love that I could carry on alone with my children for the rest of my life. We always worked 50-50 as partners. Some people say, you know, working with your manager and to live with your mess, for some people it's tough. I don't doubt it, but I'm not in their shoes. They were not in ours. I mean, if he would have been my husband, only I was working so much I couldn't have seen I was not going to see him and vice versa but um, when he passed to his other life he gave me the rest of his strength the other 50 and I really feel that it came with a set of wings that he lifted me up and I feel him every day and I see him through the eyes of my three children every day he will always be alive empty spaces what are we living for abandoned places I guess we know the score on and on does anybody know what we are looking for another hero Another mindless crime Behind the curtain In the pantomime Hold the line Does anybody want to take it anymore? Show my score
the show must go on. And he always said to me, you cannot be good all the time. You have to be good when it's time. So the show must go on had a big meaning for him. Celine's cover of The Show Must Go On, which she performed at the Billboard Music Awards just a few months after the death of her husband, René, takes us to the letter S and show business. Do I love show business? I love to sing. I love performing. I love the spotlight. I love to show off. I love to be loved. I love to be looked at. I love to be embraced. I love to be moved by the fact that I moved them but I'm trying to stay away from show business. So for me, I don't practice show business. I practice the art of expressing myself through music because show business itself for me is a place of danger. I'm not part of show business. I'm part of the stage. I'm part of the creativity. I'm part of the performance. I'm part of the musicians. I'm part of being laughing with them. I'm part of like training after the show. I'm part of like preparing myself and bring the best of me. But after the curtains, I'm going home. It's just my way of protecting myself. It's back to 1994 now for our letter T, the hit single Think Twice and Celine Dion's first UK number one. To have a number one in the UK with Think Twice was pretty big. The phones were crazy. The moment that it happened, though, was bigger. I, was, I just got married and I was so excited to just like putting my things together in our new home and all that. And I was honeymooning. And I remember my husband comes to me and he says, I have a good news and a bad news. He said, the good news is that we're number one with Think Twice in the United Kingdom. I said, okay, but what's the bad news? He said, the bad news is that you have to pack your bags. <laughs> he says, you got to get out of here. You have to leave now. We have to go and do Top of the Pops. You have to go. But I said, this is our honeymoon. He said, we're gonna honeymoon for the rest of our lives. So Think Twice got us into actually the Concorde. It was urgent. Three hours later, here we are, a cup of tea. Baby, think twice.
reached the letter U now for Unison, which Celine released back in 1990. It might have been her ninth album, but for many, it was her first. Unison, my first English album, was a big deal because... I wanted to have an international career. Rene told me that I needed to learn English, and I am not joking. When I went to to school, the first day of school, they said in two months, if she comes every day, nine to five, five days a week, it's going to take two months. It was so bad. It was like, abba, abba, aga, aga, abba, zuka, nothing. Two months later, I started to dream in English. I mean, to be able to have an international career, to do unison, to do an album, I have to learn English to be able to express and understand what I'm talking about, what I'm singing about, to answer the questions. It was not perfect, but practicing it every day. And here I am today still searching for some of the English words. My first language will always be French, but it was a must. I had to learn English. So much to believe in We were lost in time Everything I needed Fell into your eyes Always thought of keeping Your heart next to mine Does my heart beat now from Unison, her first English language album. Celine Dion possesses a three octave range and has been described as a technical marvel, a vocal Olympian for whom there's no mountain or scale high enough. So for the letter V, let's discuss what might be described as her most important asset, her voice. The voice is an important asset for sure. Is it the most important asset? I don't think so. I started my career without any vocal rules, any teachers, and we all thought that because we had songs and I could sing the songs that we were blessed until something happened when I lost my voice one day. Overworked, no training, no discipline, no technique. And we went to see a Dr. Gould and I knew I was in good hands because when I was there waiting for my turn, Luciano Pavarotti came in and I said to myself, okay, I think I'm in the right place. Luciano was so sweet and embraced me and all that. And finally, make a long story shorter, he said, I'm going to tell you something. If you keep singing like this without a coach, without a technique, you will not have a career. You need a coach. You're an athlete. So I did. And Dr. Riley became my first coach. And he said, first of all, before we start the technique and sing, I want you to stop talking for three weeks. For three weeks. It was probably the best days of my husband when I stopped talking for three weeks, not just for my husband. But anyway, so that was the beginning of training my voice. So the voice is important, but how to deliver a song, how to convince the people, how to, to believe in what you're saying, even before the song starts. It's a performance. So my husband would go by numbers. That's why I did say gambler before, because he loved numbers as well, a lot. 
And she would say, let's say you need mm, 25% of talent, voice, 15% of luck, 30% of choosing the right songs, and whatever the rest of the percentage left here, to be there at the right time. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. That is how I know you go on Far across the distance And spaces between us You have come to show you go on There's so many talented people out there, and you wonder how come they have one hit and they don't have a career? They still have the voice. It's just that I believe that people come to see me when I perform. I think it's, it's not about my voice. I think it's the voice, the songs, the personality, the fact that I talk more than I sing, the fact that I, it's everything. I think it's a package deal, if I may say. And Celine wore the genuine Heart of the Ocean necklace as featured in Titanic when she performed My Heart Will Go On at the Academy Awards in 1998. The song won the Oscar, by the way, and we're at W now. And for the woman who probably has everything, all we can give her is a wish. My wish? Hmm. 
there there's many health definitely to stay as healthy as possible as long as possible i wish that my kids are fulfilled with health and happiness and they find their way in life of course i wish that there would be no barriers in life and no wars and no abuse uh, of course that's getting deeper and on a note that's just absolutely lighter i just hope that the new tour i hope that people will be pleased because it's to please and to have fun and to have a good time i hope they love the new album as well ah the new album well for our letter x please excuse another small piece of poetic license x is for exclusive yes a few exclusive words please on 2019's courage this is the first english album that i'm doing without my husband physically even though like i told you he's always there the title itself for me at this part of my life courage could not have been a we couldn't have found a better title because it it's been hard i mean to lose your husband is hard to have young kids and a teenager lose their dad that was not easy and it's still not easy it's different because the energy i can go and get it just like because he is within me and he lives among me with my children so it is different like we talked earlier the influence in the music today so you're trying to blend on the trying to chase but i've had so much fun with this album we have received so many songs and i'm so thankful and i thank all of the writers composers for allowing me to to sing their songs so i for them to think of me and sending a part of them to me i'm excited because I find that this album is not just about the upper part of my body with the heart but is with the core and I find myself that there's so many songs that I want to do that it's a non-ending album because we can't stop there's always songs coming in that I can't let go I can't choose I I can't I I can't I cannot not do this one So at the same time that we cannot wait to release the Courage album. I'm not courageous enough right now to say it's ready to come out. But I can't wait because we're going on a Courage tour and the album will follow. So I can't wait. And from Courage here's Flying on My Own. There's something shifting in the air. If I'm not mistaken. The dust is clearing everywhere Memories awaken my feet on the runway It's a beautiful day I look to the sky now I'm finding my way I'm flying Flying on my own is more than a fun song to receive a song that I can actually even me go in a club stand up and dance oh my god
Letter Y now on a song called You and I, which was adopted by Canada's National Airline. And naturally, there was an accompanying video which saw Celine perform in the glamorous location of an aircraft hangar in Toronto. And on and on this earth spins like a carousel If I could travel across the world to see I do remember doing the video of the song You and I, being in a hangar of an airport and having the plane flying above my head and all that. And I was actually in Las Vegas physically while the rest of the video was being shot in Toronto. I mean, honestly, there was one video happening at two places at the same time, but it couldn't clone me. So, I stayed in Vegas and the rest of it was in Toronto. Oh, spoiler. But does Celine still enjoy making vids? I prefer to do photo shoots than videos. It's quicker. And you pose, you invent, you reinvent yourself. When you do a video, it's again and again and again and again. And before the song is out, you're like, am I tired of singing that song already? It's not even out yet. No, I'm not, I'm exaggerating, but it's almost a little bit like that. So, we've reached the end of our A to Z, and wait for it, there is a Z. It's the song Ziggy, which Celine recorded back in 1991. Ziggy is actually a song that was written by Michel Berger and Luc Plamondon. And when I started to sing that song, it was a huge success, especially in France. And I sang that song, and people responded very, very well to that song. And I was like, I like the song, I did a video, and... It seemed to me that people liked it more than me. And until I started to meet someone that's working with us now, uh, he's my stylist, uh, he's my dance partner, until I started to associate that, wow, I can dedicate this song to someone that I like so much. I've never had a friend that I could really talk to, um, beyond working with and now Ziggy has become like a new song for me because I think of him now it feels like the song has another life Ziggy Il s'appelle Ziggy Je suis folle de lui C'est un garçon pas comme les autres Mais moi je l'aime c'est pas de ma faute Même si je sais 
qui ne m'aimera jamais. Ziggy, il s'appelle Ziggy. Je l'aime, c'est pas ma faute Même si je sais Qu'il ne m'aimera jamais And there you have Celine Dion from A to Z Wow I don't look back I look forward I look ahead I focus in front of me I have so much ambition and dreams and things to accomplish so much to do and if i could tell my 12 year old me i would say the best is yet to come thanks for listening thank you to celine dion i'm steve wright the program was written and produced by malcolm prince incredible thank you malcolm don't come back with more questions i'm done